It's just about 6.30. Again, this is KQED FM in San Francisco. And now let's join a special celebration from NPR and KQED FM. It's Jazz Alive. Live from Blues Alley in Washington, D.C. This is Jazz Alive's New Year's Eve. I'm Rhonda Hamilton with Billy Taylor, getting ready to swing into 1980 with Eddie Cleanhead Vinson, Harry Sweets Edison, the Ray Bryan Trio, and Zoot Sims and Al Cohn, together with Jimmy Rolls and Carol Sloan. We've just stuffed ourselves with some delicious Creole cooking, courtesy of Chef Gil Belton, and we're hungry for some music. So let's go to the stage and join our master of ceremonies, the voice of Jazz Alive, Billy Taylor. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> and a happy new year to you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm standing here with uh, several of my very favorite musicians, and uh, directly behind me is Al Cohen. How about it for Al Cohen? <laughs> Zoot Sims. Jimmy Rose. Michael DePasqua. And Major Holly. One of the, one of the most exciting uh, sounds in jazz is the sound of two tenors playing together. These two tenors are very special because they breathe almost as one person. They not only have a tremendous respect for one another when they play, but there's always a lot going on whenever, whenever they're playing individually or collectively. So without further ado, here are Zoot and Al. <laughs> Thank you. 
very much. Thank you. That was The Red Door by Zoot. And now we'd like to play a beautiful tune written by Johnny Mandel. This is called Emily. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'd like to feature Al Cohen uh, uh, on a tune with a beautiful title, uh, America the Beautiful.
America the Beautiful. Yeah, Al. You ever hear it like that? Al Cohn. You know this is Major Holly on the bass, but for those of you in the club, you may not be able to see the talented young man hidden behind all those symbols. Stand up for a minute, Mike. <laughs> right, Michael DePasco. They're going to take it easy for a minute, this uh, uh, two-thirds of this very fine trio, so that we can present a unique side of uh, the pianist. He is perhaps the most sought-after accompanist in the business. He's played for just about everybody you can think of. And when Sarah Vaughan is really looking for someone, she says, hey, got to get him, Jimmy Rolls. When Peggy Lee is looking for somebody, says, Jimmy Rolls. I mean, when Carol Sloan is Jimmy, everybody wants Jimmy Rolls, you know. But Jimmy has other talents. He is, is very special. Watch yourself. <laughs> that was Carol laughing. <laughs> um, Jimmy is a, an excellent pianist, composer, and he's done some very beautiful things in a solo context, and we'd like to present him now as a soloist. This is Jimmy Rolls at the piano.
B flat. Nights alone since you went away. I think about you all through the day. My buddy, my buddy, nobody quite so true. I miss your voice, the touch of your hand. Just to know you understand, my buddy, my buddy, your buddy misses you. Jimmy Roll. As you can easily see, this is an all-star band. I mean, that, <laughs> that uh, phrase is banded about quite a bit. But John Bunyan here at the Blues Alley has uh, a unique talent. Not only has he brought in really first-rate musicians, he's brought in a group of first-rate listeners. So you're to be applauded, too. Thank you. <laughs> For those of uh, our audience who are just joining us on the radio out there, we're coming from Blues Alley in Washington. I'm Billy Taylor. We're listening to Zoot and Al because they've got something very special going for uh, our first set to get us started here on Jazz Alive on New Year's Eve. This is a special broadcast for us because we've got uh, all kinds of things happening with the satellite, got all kinds of folks listening to us, so we're excited about it. And to help us share that excitement with you, is one of the most unique talents in jazz. He sings as he plays the bass violin, and he sings in the same octave. Uh, there's another guy who does this. I can't remember his name at the moment. <laughs> Slam Stewart, who sings an octave above. But uh, Major Holly has a unique talent for not only playing very beautiful lines on the bass, both with the bow and pizzicato, but he does it in a very individual way, as I think you'll agree. This is Major Holly. A little love for 1980, he said. <laughs>
Major Holly was with us last year. We're going to make this an annual thing. I mean, <laughs> that's terrific. <laughs> I'm getting very annual. Getting very annual, right. The next very talented artist is someone who I've admired for many years because she, unlike many singers, has a very beautiful sense of pitch, a marvelous lyricism in terms of the way she handles the lyrics of the songs she chooses to sing. She swings, she has all of the qualities that make for a really great jazz artist, but she puts them into a very personal package, as do all of the performers who are on stage tonight. And we'd re really like to have you really give a warm welcome for the very beautiful and the very uh, talented Carol Sloan. Carol Sloan, Miss Carol Sloan. <laughs> written by Jimmy Rose, with lyrics by Johnny Mercer, and we'd like to dedicate this tonight to the members of the Society of Victor Invictus, which has its headquarters here in Washington, D.C. You'll understand what I mean when I start to sing. Frazier was an aging lion, living in a cage of iron, in a circus out of Tijuana. Frazier was their main attraction, and he gave them satisfaction, doing it with talent and with honor. Growling for his daily dinner, Frazier kept on getting thinner, on a measly can of Spam or tuna. Well, times were lean, but he was leaner, so one night in Pasadena, through the bars, he split for South Laguna. A oh, cruel is fate, but it's never too late, said Frazier. I'm 91 and I haven't a son, thought Frazier. The blue-eyed truth is I'm ready for euthanasia. But Madden and Tari, a local safari, rescued poor old Frazier. First they combed his tangled tresses, housed him with the lionesses, thinking him a harmless old grandpapa. They fed him niacin and chloride, B1, 2, 6, 12, and fluoride, clams, cod liver oil, cobalt, and copper. Younger studs brought in for breeding, wound up beaten, bruised, and bleeding. Every day the same thing kept occurring Stretched out on an old serapi There lay Frazier, tired and happy And all the ladies on the nest were purring A cruel is fate, but it's never too late, said Frazier Announced the feast, I'm the king of the beasts, roared Frazier but king or not, I'm certainly hot, grinned Frazier. And when you're hot and hitting that spot, the action might amaze you. Children by his wife's eleven added up to fifty-seven. 
What nocturnal bliss he must have tasted For no matter what the night time Any night time was the right time Daytime found him fast asleep just wasted When the circus owner found him He brought a lawsuit to impound him Saying all you cats have to go where we go Frazier cried Hasta la vista Do you think all these chicks are my sister? I'm in business for myself, amigo Ah, cruel is fate, but it's never too late, said Frazier I thank my stars I'm not behind bars, smiled Frazier They pay to see what comes naturally in Asia And no African cat ever had it like that And that goes for Malaysia up above dear Frazier He's raising cubs dear Frazier Happy, happy I hope that Kansas City's listening. I can't pull my ear, but we got some friends in Kansas City who want to say a special hello to and Raleigh, North Carolina. Ooh, heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak, and I seem to find the happiness I seek when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek. Ooh, heaven. And the cares that hung around me through the week Seem to vanish like some gambler's lucky streak When we're out together dancing cheek to cheek I'd love to climb a mountain and to reach the highest peak But I don't enjoy it half as much as dancing cheek to cheek Yes, I'd love to go out fishing in a river or a creek but I don't enjoy it half as much as dancing cheek to cheek. Oh, dance with me. I want my arms about you, the charms about you to carry me through to heaven. I'm in heaven. And my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. Then I seem to find the happiness that I see. Dancing cheek to cheek oh, whoa, 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 heaven I'm in heaven Heart beats so that I can hardly speak Then I seem to find the happiness I see When I'm together dancing cheek to cheek Oh, ba da da do ba ba do 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 ba ba do da ba do be Together, dancing cheek to cheek I would love to climb a mountain and reach the highest peak I don't enjoy it half as much as dancing cheek to cheek I'd love to go out fishing in a river or a creek But I don't enjoy it half as much Dancing cheek to cheek, I dance with me. I want my arms about you, the charms about you. Carry me through to heaven. Woo! I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. I seem to find the happiness that I seek when we're out together dancing. Out together dancing, out together dancing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, we're together, ooh, we're together, ooh, we're together, cheek to
Carol Sloan. Beautiful, Carol. See, it takes an audience like this to respond to the lyrics to that first tune. <laughs> right. Zoot Sims has done what most tennis would, tenor players would like to do. He's played with all of the great uh, accompanists, and he's played in uh, many different kinds of uh, groups. The Four Brothers with Woody Herman. He's done all kinds of things. But the area that I like to hear him best is when he's doing something with a quartet and you've got the kind of empathy that you have in a trio like this one headed with uh, headed by Jimmy Rolls and Zoot with just his tenor in hand doing something like the one he's going to do for you right now this is Zoot Sims <laughs>
I want to be like the next guy who's coming on. He's uh, <laughs> he's uh, a gentleman who set the pace for all of the trumpeters who have passed through the uh, Count Basie band. And anytime you hear Basie's band, there's certainly a fact to our next artist because he's not only a very uh, personable gentleman, he's a very special kind of stylist. Whenever Frank Sinatra is looking for someone to play those beautiful fills behind his uh, singing, he gets Harry Sweets Edison. When any number of people who really want the very best kind of most sensitive playing behind them, uh, they always call on this gentleman. When he steps out in front, something very special happens. And he'll show you the lyrical side of Harry Sweets Edison and why we call him Sweets when he plays this first tune. This is Harry Sweets Edison. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sweet Edison. Oh, yeah. Zook, Al, will join us. And with the kind permission of Jimmy Rolls, I'll get a chance to sit down at the piano for a minute. We're going to do Just Friends.
Edison, Al Cohn, Major Holly, Suit Sim, Michael DePasca. Are you enjoying it so far? You're a marvelous audience. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Zoo Sims, Al Cohen, and the very beautiful group, how about another special hand for both Jimmy Rolls and Carol Sloan? How about that? Oh, I tell you, if all first sets like that were like that, we wouldn't have a thing to worry about, right? Okay. We're going to take uh, just a minute and talk with uh, Zoot and uh, Jimmy over there in the corner. You won't be able to hear it in the room, but the folks out there will be able to hear it because they have some very special things to say about the jazz scene and about jazz in general. We'd like to thank you very much, and we'll be back shortly. Thank you, Billy. I'm Rhonda Hamilton, and this is Jazz Alive's New Year's Eve special. We'll return to Blues Alley in Washington, D.C. with Eddie Cleanhead Vincent, the Ray Bryan Trio, Harry Sweet Edison, and a whole lot more. After this 10-second pause for station identification, this is NPR, National Public Radio. Are we enjoying it indeed? Jazz Alive coming to you from KQED FM in San Francisco. Let's return. And we're back live with Jazz Alive's New Year's Eve special. Here in Blues Alley, we've got a break between sets. And right now, both Zood and Zimmy are with us at the broadcast table, along with uh, Billy Taylor. I'd like to talk to them for a few minutes. Zood, I really had a, a ball listening to you uh, as you played with Al. It's been a long time. You know, the, the idea of two tenors uh, is a special one, but you and Al do some uh, almost uh, uncanny things in terms of just... Uh, weaving in and out of uh, uh, one another solo. How long have you been playing together? Uh, I would say about 20 years. That long? Yeah. From, uh, yes. Uh, we're not the original, but uh, I think we lasted the longest. Though. <laughs> right, I agree. I mean, as far as two tenors are concerned. Right. Uh, I think Don Bias and uh, Coleman Hawkins did it for a while. That's right. And, and Dexter and, and Waddell. Yeah. And, and, uh, well, there have been a lot Prez, of... Prez, way back Prez and Bumps Myers. Right, that's right, yeah. Well, t tell me, uh, in terms of, uh, I know you recently did an album with Jimmy, and how did that come about, just the two of you? Well, Jimmy and I go back a long ways uh, in L.A., and uh, well, Jimmy's a big help to me. You know, uh, plus, it plus, to me, play, too. <laughs> plus playing with the way he does. I mean, he brings up uh, tunes and ideas, for, and, uh, and that's why my, I think my recordings are changed a little bit and gotten a little better, more organized and uh, uh -huh. different tunes. And, uh, yeah, he knows mean, a where do you them. come up with some of those tunes that you, that you well, find? Well, I, I don't know. I just uh, make Zoot recall them. He knows them. He just forgot them, that's all. Huh? Well, I, I, doing Shadow Walls, for instance, like like a bossa nova, that was a terrific idea. Yeah, it works well. Yeah, yeah really, it's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. And and in the in the earliest in the set we just finished with uh, Al playing uh, America the Beautiful, man, that that really freaked me out. That's yeah, beautiful. Well, I think it's Jimmy started that. Yeah, uh -huh. that's beautiful. Yeah, Jimmy, you really have quite a I sense of humor just, with those tunes. He does. You, you know, um, have you ever recorded those those tunes yourself? Some of the ones like the Carol Sloan sang and like the Ballad of Thelonious Monk. You recorded that yourself? Uh, I did the Ballad of Thelonious Monk with Sarah Vaughan. Right, and Carl McRae also. Uh, and um, I, I think we did Cheek to Cheek with Carol just lately, but I don't think it's out yet. We'll have to look for that. And I made a, a, a solo thing with a trio, a bass, I think, with George Braz on that waltz that I played. Uh, what is Lady, the name of that waltz? Lady in the Corner. Lady in the Corner. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, yeah, a lot of very interesting harmonies in it. Well, you know, one of the things I like about what you do, Jimmy, is, is that I was look, uh, listening to the way you were playing behind Zoot on his solo a moment ago, and just the harmonic uh, uh, directions that you find to go in it must be very exciting for a soloist. I mean, it gives you another idea about where to go. It is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Jimmy's like an orchestra behind me. Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got that arranger's uh, uh, kind got, of direction. Yeah, he's got a lot of background, too, you know. I mean, uh, we play a Duke tune, you know, he knows... He knows how to just make it sound like the way the Duke tunes should right, sound. Right. You know, or, I wish I could. <laughs> oh, you do. You do. Sure. Well, you know, I think I think that that's. that's Would you come on to be modest? 
<laughs> yeah, I came out to be modest. You sound just like him. <laughs> Well, actually, in terms of uh, what uh, uh, Jimmy brings to any kind of group, whether it's a, a trio, or with, with, you know, piano trio, or a group where he's uh, playing behind singers or solos, uh, um, uh, or instrumental solos, is that whole concept of, uh, of the continuum of jazz. I mean, he was behind Carol Sloan, he's playing stride piano and, and doing something. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, you know, to have all of that at your command. And I noticed that you do some of that kind of stuff on the tender. I hear re references to Ben Webster and, yeah. and people like that's beautiful. Well, I think Rhonda hit it. He's got a lot of sense of humor too. He's got a good sense of humor, right? Which I think is great. And by the way, Billy, it was very exciting playing with you again. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's you been sure a long did time. sound beautiful. Yeah, sound great. I was sitting right behind you. <laughs> There's one I thing I always you. wanted to ask you: Zoo. we have Sweets Edison here and Cleet Hen Vincent. His nickname was kind of obvious, but how'd you get the name Zoo? Oh, when I was a kid, about. 16, they put nicknames on the on the music stand. Zoot, Scoot, Zoot, and, uh, you know, that was popular in those days. And, uh, and mine was Zoot. And uh, when I left that band, a couple of guys went with me with another band, Bobby Shearer's band, and uh, just kept it going. And there was another guy in the band that still kept his, but his was Goo Goo, so... Uh, <laughs> you got I got lucky, I think. Yeah. You got lucky. Listen, I'd like to thank you very much. We have much more for those who are here in, in Blues Alley. We're going to have the uh, privilege and the pleasure of listening to both of you again. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at, at the broadcast table. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now here with us at the broadcast table are Eddie Cleanhead Vincent and Ray Bryant. How are you feeling tonight? Oh, just fine. How are you? Just before we, were, we um, uh, went back on the air, uh, we were talking about the Milt Larkin band down yes. in... You're from Houston, Texas. From Houston, Texas. Yeah. And there was yeah. a lot going on down there in those days. You were telling me about something. Who was in the band? Oh, uh, well, We had uh, Arnett Cobb is in the re uh, Reed section. I had uh, Illinois Jacket was one of them. I, myself, Frank Romantic, Gus Evans. You know the regular. Well, you had really some bands. Oh, it was pretty nice. That's that was one of those, one of those territory bands. Yeah, wasn't that's it? right. Mm -hmm. You guys went all over the southwest. All over the south. We went. We got it far in Chicago. <laughs> and we didn't have our union card, so that sent us back. Sent you back. Well, well, tell me this. Was that where you heard the, the blues the first time? No, I heard the blues years ago with the Big Bill and uh, Neil Green made a tour, and we made a tour with them. The back, a big band was back of us. That's why I actually really. You know, fell in love with, with the blues, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I know that uh, Ray uh, is is a very uh, blues oriented player, and and Ray, I, the first time I heard you, I was uh, impressed by the gospel influence in what you did. Where'd that come from? Well, I'll tell you, that came from a lady who is listening right now in Philadelphia, my mother. Really? That's right. She, well, she's happy New Year, mother. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have a brother who plays bass, Tommy, of course, yeah. and my sister is a school teacher in Philadelphia there, and uh, I think probably the greatest organist gospel organist in the world. Beautiful. Because it all comes from mom. Hello, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, my mother is a practicing minister. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, in the course of growing up, I had lots of opportunities to play in the church. As a matter of fact, I was drafted a few times, you know, just when I go to church and need a piano player, I say, well, here's Elder Bryant, son, let him play. <laughs> right? So I can really come by that honestly. And, well, it surely, comes, it surely comes out, out in your playing. I know in some of your compositions, and especially, I'm, I'm thinking of Willow Weep for me and some of the solos that you play where I hear really a lot of gospel overtones. It sounds beautiful. Thank you, Bill. One, one of the uh, things that, that I think both of you have that I, that I admire tremendously is uh, the sound. I mean, you get a, a unique touch on the piano, and Eddie has his own uh, uh, very easily identifiable sound on the alto saxophone. And that kind of goes back, I guess, to the continuum of jazz in, in the early days where yes. everybody had to be uh, yes. very much identified with his own thing. Right, right. Yes, right. which isn't uh, always the way now. No, it's know? not the case no, no, now. No, no. <laughs> Well, well tell, tell me, in terms of uh, playing together, have you played together very much? Yeah, uh, I've had the pleasure of playing with uh, Eddie uh, oh, maybe goodness. about two or three, 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 three or four times yes. uh, mm -hmm. previous to tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah I used to white, stay up it? in Boston. I remember you had a great thing happening up there with some other saxophonist from uh, Texas. Arnett Carr was up there and Buddy Tate. And That's right. That. Yeah. That was uh, fantastic. Yeah. We had a good band, yeah, with yeah. George Vivier and Alan right. Dawson was on drums. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Had wonderful. Yeah, good week. Well, in, in, in terms of the, the Texas tenor sound, that, that, that's a very special quality. That's one of the swingingest uh, kinds of tenor sounds, I think. Yeah, I, I don't understand that, but uh, they do have a distinctive, you know, a style, you know, to me. I, I don't hear the boys back east, you know, 
during the time that we were coming up like 36 and 37. That's a way before your time, but you know, that's where everybody was born. Well, when, when you were with Cootie Williams, is that when you started singing the blues? Well, I started singing blues like between sets <clears throat> with the big band. We used to have to take a little oil to kick out the next set you play, and then I would sing the blues in between the time. So uh, Cootie came down to Houston to organize. He was going to organize a band. So uh, he came down. He wanted blues singing. And so he heard me singing the blues, cheer it, and that's how I got my job with Cootie Williams. Band. Yeah. So from then on, I've been singing blues. He discovered a lot of people. A lot of people don't realize that Bud Paul worked with, with his, one of his That's early right. Players. When he was a, a, just a kid, he came up for a rehearsal one day, and that was it, playing futuristic music, he called it. Really? At the time. Yeah. Did you know Bud in, in Philadelphia, um, uh, Ray? Who's that? Who's that? Bud, Bud Powell? Um, well, I met Bud um, towards the end of his life. You know? um, mm -hmm. That's when he had come back to Philadelphia, and he wasn't uh, too healthy. He used to come by uh, Blue Note. Where you and, were? Uh, yeah, you know, the Blue Note was a club where I where I met most of the guys that I know. You know, I, I was still in Philly at the time. Uh -huh. My buddy used to come in, and he he would uh, come and come up and play once in a while. Uh huh. But he wasn't feeling uh, too well at the time. Yeah. You know, but but I, I but I did get a chance to meet him. You yes. did. When uh -huh. you were the house pianist at the Blue Note, was there anyone in particular who came by that you remember like giving you any special advice oh, or saying something to you that that really stuck with you? Well, you know, everybody who came there, I, I got a little something from everybody who came. From Charlie Parker, uh, Lester Young, Roy Eldridge, Billy Holiday came there, Miles Davis, Sonny Rollins. Uh, you know, uh, I got something from each one of them. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's interesting, and most people are aware of the fact that uh, the inspiration goes that way. But uh, I'm thinking of, in another case, of Cannonball Adley and how much uh, he learned, and and both vice it went both ways as far as you were concerned. Yes, I, mean, yes. I hear a little Cannonball Adley and what you Yeah, do. well, you know, I have to do that now because uh, he's my man. You know, yeah. he's, uh, he's my. He, they call me his their big brother. Good. Know? Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a real, Recorded nice together man. and everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we're, we're very happy that you, you came by uh, to speak with us. We're going to be hearing you play, and for those in, uh, who've been listening to us on the radio, we've been talking to Eddie Cleanhead Vincent and Ray Bryant, who are going to be playing for us and lead us right down to the midnight hour in just a moment. And uh, having heard this group, this is really one of the swingingest groups that you're ever going to hear. And when they get into the blues, it's going to be very special. And we would like to thank you very uh, thank much. Thank you, thank you, Billy. Thank pleasure, you. pleasure being here. We can't wait to hear from the music, so if you're listening, don't go away. Now's the time to stick to your radio. But before we hear from uh, Ray and Clean Head, I'd like to tell you that Jazz Alive's New Year's Eve special is just one of the many Jazz Alive programs that you can hear weekly over most of these NPR stations. Now in its third year, Jazz Alive has presented some of the finest jazz players the world over, including your favorites, and some who we feel deserve wider recognition. And our tradition of outstanding performances will continue into the 80s when our January, February, and March programs will feature Ella Fitzgerald, Count Basie, Benny Goodman, Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, Flora Purine, Sylvia Sims, Arthur Blythe, and a whole lot more. And if you would like a schedule of upcoming Jazz Alive shows, just drop us a line to Jazz Alive, National Public Radio, Washington, D.C., 20036. That's Jazz Alive, National Public Radio, Washington, D.C., 20036. Meanwhile, here in Washington, D.C., we've got one more set to go before turning back the clock by switching out to the Jazz Showcase in Chicago, where Dick Buckley is waiting with Ken Nordeen and the Vaughn Freeman Quartet and the Woody Shaw Quintet. And after they say so long to the 70s, we'll turn back the clock again for the third and final time. Our Blakey and his All-Stars will be out in San Francisco at the Keystone Corner, standing by to take us into the 80s. And once again, that's the last time we'll uh, put this on for tonight. And the hosts out in San Francisco are Leonard Feather and Gerald Wilson. So we got a lot of good music ahead of us. The band is uh, warming up at this moment. Ray Bryan about to sit at the piano and uh, George Baraz is on the bass. And Walter Bolden's going to be playing the drums on this set. And Eddie Cleanhead Vincent, of course, on his alto saxophone and doing some of his great vocals. So uh, stay right where you are now. We're about to celebrate the new year in Blues Alley. It's just about 50 minutes or so before the midnight hour. We're going to have a great 
celebration here. So I hope you can stay with us. I hope whatever you're doing, you're having a good time getting your champagne out. we got a lot of champagne happening here at Blues Alley, and uh, the balloons are about ready to go. So let's go back to the stage for more music and Bully Taylor. We're back. And we're... <laughs> All right. It's New Year's Eve, and we're all here at the very famous Washington, D.C. club, the one where everybody, when they come to Georgetown, come and take a look and say, hey, let's go to the place where everything swings, Blues Alley. My name is Billy Taylor, and we have the Ray Bryant Trio. And Rhonda... Rhonda Hamilton and, and, and I were just talking with Ray and uh, Eddie Cleanhead Vincent uh, just uh, on the radio a moment ago, and they were telling us some interesting things, which I'll share with you in a little while, those of you here in the room. But right now, we've been talking for a long time, so let's get right into the music with the Ray Bryant Trio. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was a little tune written by the great Dizzy Gillespie. I think, uh, I think also in conjunction with Charlie Parker. One of them wrote it, uh, maybe, I think maybe both of them. It was entitled Billy's Bounce. <laughs> I could do for you next a tune which is closely associated with one and only Billy Holiday. I'd like to dedicate this tune to a very dear friend of jazz up around the Troy, Schenectady, New York area. Her name is Georgia Urban, and she's a jazz journalist, and she's done quite a bit for jazz people. Hello, Georgia. Happy New Year. Uh, we're not going to do the one you requested because somebody already did it. We're going to do Good Morning Heartache. A tune written by the late great jazz pianist Bobby Timmons, who also was from Philadelphia. We like to do his jazz classic entitled Moanin'. 